How's it going everybody? It's Squeegee Donato here and today we're going to be taking a look at taking a Blender file, putting it into Unity, and then making it playable in Skater XL. This is a tutorial I've covered in the past, but I think it's time for an upgrade. So let's go ahead and jump right into it. Here I have my Blender file, and as you can see it's all set up as a skate park. I've got a couple basic features, nothing crazy, and I'm ready to put this into Skater XL. So my first step is just going to be to save it. It will automatically save it into your Blender Projects file, and that's fine. The next step is going to be to go ahead and fire up a new Unity project. So we're going to go to Unity Hub. Now we're going to go ahead and click on New. We're going to hit High Definition Render Pipeline. This is pretty important. You need to make sure that you're using the HDRP package. It'll say Preview, but that's fine. We're going to name it whatever we want. And then we're going to hit Create. I've already gone ahead and created one, so we'll go ahead and jump into that now. Okay, so this is the first thing you'll see when you fire up a new Unity project. I'm going to go ahead and scale this back a little bit so I can view my editor a bit better. By holding Alt and using the left click, I can move my camera around. Alt and middle click, I can pan. And by middle clicking once, I'll center the pivot point of my camera in that position. Now that we've got the basics of kind of moving around in Unity a little bit, let's go ahead and clean up this scene. First of all, we need to delete the main camera. Always delete the main camera, because if there's a camera in our sample scene, then that is what the camera will be locked to once we go into Skater XL. Next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna delete these example assets, and we're gonna delete the post-process volume. We can actually leave the volume settings in the directional light, although I like to also delete both of these and start completely from scratch a lot of the time. I'm gonna go ahead and create an empty. I'm gonna rename this to spawn point just like that now wherever the location of this null object is is where our skater will spawn and they'll spawn facing the direction of this blue arrow here so i'll just go ahead and set this to zero 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 for the time being but we'll move this in a moment here the next thing we're going to do is we're going to right click again in this area and we're going to go ahead and select create rendering and we're going to create a scene settings Okay, that's fine to begin with. We can adjust this later. And the final thing we're gonna do is right click, create light, directional light. I like to go ahead and dial this to about 3.1 or five is about as high as I like to go. The default scene light comes in at 10, which is completely absurd. Now finally, it's time to get our Blender file. But first we need to do a couple other things. First and foremost, let's go ahead and delete the scripts file. This is very important. We do not want any scripts files. Any scripts will have errors on compiling. We also need to delete the readme. We don't need to, but it's useless. We can also delete the tutorial info folder. We can leave the rest of this, although I usually like to delete the example assets folder. Really, you can delete all these except for the scenes folder, but leaving these three isn't a bad idea, at least for starters. So the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and import a file that will give me the ability to build the asset bundle for this map, which is how we actually create our map in the end. So I'll leave a link in the description of where you can download this file, and it's called Editor Folder Unity Package. And I'm just going to drag this to my Assets folder, hit Import, and now we have an Editor folder inside of this Required folder. The editor folder means anything in this is a script that will not be executed on compiling. It is only for use in the editor. This also comes with two others. It comes with the assign material, which allows me to assign a material to multiple objects at the same time. It comes with the create asset bundle script, which we need to build our map in the end. And it comes with this mask maker, which allows us to build a mask map out of other channel maps, which is something that we'll cover in our, in our texturing tutorial. For now, this is all that we need. I'm gonna go ahead and create a new folder. I'm gonna call this models. And now inside this models folder, I'm gonna put my blend file. So now we need to go to where we saved our blend file. For me, it's this YouTube demonstration dot blend. And I'm gonna go ahead and just drag and drop this into my models folder. It'll take a moment for Unity to catch up. Okay, so our blend file is now in Unity. And we can go ahead and just drag that into our scene. I'm gonna go ahead and set the coordinates to 0, 0, 0. This is pretty useful for making changes later. And as we can see, we have a 3D model in our Unity editor window. Now something to note is that if I want to make changes to my blend file, I need to make sure to overwrite the save. So if I'm going to move my skater here from that side of the rail to this side of the rail, and then save, 
nothing will happen in Unity because I haven't changed the save location of my blend file. It's still saving to this Blender Projects location. But what I can do is I can go to where I have my Unity Projects saved and I can go to this, I'm gonna go to my Assets, I'm gonna go to where the Models folder is and another way to navigate here to figure out where exactly this is is we can right click and show an Explorer and this will show us where exactly all of our Unity projects are saved to. And now when I save, I'm gonna overwrite this file here in my Unity folder. So now that I've saved it there, if I go back into Unity, it will actually automatically update. And now the skater has gone ahead and moved to the other side of the rail. Another quick tip, and this is kind of a lazy way of doing things, but it's not a bad idea for when you're first starting out, but it is to go ahead and select our blend file here. I'm going to hit model and we're going to go ahead and check this generate colliders button and what this means is it'll automatically generate a mesh collider for every object on every update of this map. So if I were to add more objects in in say Blender it will automatically create a mesh collider for them. I don't have to go in and uh, manually generate mesh colliders. If that option is not ticked what we can do to create a mesh collider is click on our object, go add component, mesh collider. And now there's a mesh collider on this object. And what a mesh collider is, is it's a collider, which is a physical barrier that other objects with colliders will interact with physically. Without a collider, that's essentially just scenery. It looks nice, but you can't interact with it in the game. That's a good thing to note. We try to use primitive colliders as often as possible. For instance, this rail we should do with a capsule collider, and I'll show that in a minute here. But for starters, this is a good starting point with mesh colliders for testing purposes. So the final step to get this into the game as a map is we're going to click on our scenes folder. We're going to click on our scene. We're going to come down here to where it says asset labels and we're going to label it. We'll just call this YouTube demonstration. And then we're going to go ahead and go to our scene, right click, click build asset bundles. And it'll go ahead and build our map. This will take a little while. so go drink some tea and we'll be right back okay so our map has finished building and we go up here to our asset bundles folder and I'm gonna go ahead and show an explorer and if we take a look we'll get a couple of different files here but the one that we're actually concerned with is this one here it's my map name which in this case was YouTube demonstration and the type is just file so YouTube demonstration dot file it's also pretty obvious because it's the only file that's not one or two kilobytes at first and we can go ahead and just drag this to our maps folder. And now this is a playable map in Skater XL. In the next part, we'll take a look at setting up grinds, working with colliders in a little more in depth. And then in future episodes, we'll do a little better job of covering texturing. Thanks for watching guys, and I'll see you next time.